Hi and welcome back to the University of Law podcast. I'm your host, Rick Palmer. Today I've got a great interview for you with Joel Lisinska, who is a careers advisor. Joel Lisinska advises students that are doing business courses and business degrees on how to um, succeed in those professions, also advising on legal careers as well. So Joel's got a lot of great experience. It's a really interesting hot topic at the moment that we're going to talk about though. We're talking about video interviewing and now more than ever, video interviews are going to become a very important way of life because a lot of employers have no option but to use video interviewing right now. However, even when we lockdown is gone and so on, we will still be using this technology. It's been used for a long time in business already. And if anything, technology is becoming more and more important in business. So listen to this and take heed of the advice. There's some really brilliant advice in this um, in this conversation. So here we are. We've got Joel Dinska, a careers advisor, advising us on how to be successful in video interviewing. Sure, um, I'm the employability manager for the business school, and I've been working at the university for the last four years or so. Um, before that, I ran a career service at a big university in West London. So I've got a, a lot of experience in careers guidance and workshops and employer engagement. And of course, we're all in unprecedented times at the moment. Um, so video interviewing is something close to my heart because it's something that employers use anyway, but it's going to be used even more so under the current lockdown arrangements. Yeah, I can imagine. So when we talk about video interview, what do we mean by that? Well, there's different kinds, actually. There's, there's the, what, the rather disconcerting one where you get, um, you're looking at a blank screen and you're getting a written question and you have to answer it in a, in a set number of minutes, um, which is really quite stressful. Or there's the actual live interview, which is, I think, what we're going to be focusing on in our chat today, yeah. where there's an actual person on the other end. It's either a Skype interview or Zoom, which seems to be very popular, yeah. and it's Adobe Connect. So there's all sorts of software around, which is actually pretty easy to use. Um, it's just getting used to the sound of your own voice with, without <laughs> necessarily seeing somebody. But but for some of these software platforms, you actually do get to see the other person, which maybe for video interviewing is, is a bit uh, easier than just sound. Yeah, just to bounce off. So what's your first piece of advice then for anyone who's been maybe invited to one of these interviews? Well, I think the first thing is not to get too stressed out about it um, and to practice, practice everything, practice how you sound, practice what your questions are going to be, just yeah. like you would in a face-to-face, a -face, the more traditional face-to-face -face interview where you would be practicing either to a mirror or to a member of your family or a friend. So that still applies, but with video interviewing, there's the added um, practice, what you actually look like on camera, yeah. what you sound like with the audio, um, what have you got, um, where, where are you actually located? So you've got a few more things to think about than just coming into a room and sitting in front of somebody. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is what we're talking about today. We're giving tips about how to do this in, in the best way possible, um, and there'll also be if anybody wants, there'll be some written guidelines on video interviewing, um, if, if, should anybody want that. So for anyone who's um, maybe a little bit anti-technology and a bit worried about a video interview, do you have any advice about how to you know, deal with any technology issue that might arise? Yes, the technology is always the one you think, oh, is it going to go wrong? Um, and obviously this is where the practice comes in. So before you actually set up with the real thing, that you have a practice with a friend on the other end. I mean, you've got, every, we've hopefully all got friends on the other end of mm -hmm. Skype or phones, but even on a phone call, you could practice uh, talking and see how that comes across and record that. Record it on your iPhone or your smartphone, um, just to see what you sound like and how you come across. Because sometimes we find ourselves speaking very, very fast. I, I get that with some students, um, mm -hmm. or very loud, or rather monotone and they're talking like this. So it's um, it's this whole practice thing. Oh, but you we were talking about the technology. So the obvious thing is to make sure everything works beforehand, not two minutes before it starts, yes. but maybe a sort of a good hour or two beforehand. So you, so you minimize your stress levels, make sure everything's plugged in 
or that the battery isn't going to die on you um, midway through the interview. That's a good point. Um, these things do happen, and you know, if technology does go wrong, then maybe you can have a backup plan that you'd email the employer straight away on your phone um, to say, sorry, something's gone wrong. Um, it's how you react and, and how you cope with that situation that always that also says a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, so have that backup plan if, if everything does suddenly crash. Um, make I sure think, the microphone works and yeah. Yeah. I think they are sympathetic about it, but obviously you don't want to be the person that's remembered for making a mistake. I remember I was interviewing someone once who was overseas and Skype wouldn't work and we just phoned them off my phone and we I think we did a WhatsApp video and it was fine and I think we even offered the job. So I think employers are sympathetic, but again, you don't want to be memorable for the wrong reasons if you can avoid Well, I think you don't want to be memorable for being boring or yeah. not being able to cope or something goes wrong, you just panic completely. And actually, if something does go wrong and you turn the situation around, actually, that might be memorable in the right way. Yeah. So, I mean, we're all getting used to um, this this way of working, although video interviewing has been around for quite some time now. A lot of employers are using it. But the face-to-face -face stuff now is going to perhaps, face-to-face -face online, that is, is going to be um, m much more common as we're all working remotely. I think that's a really good point, actually. If you've got some solutions you can give the, the future employer to a problem, that's actually a really good idea. You know, if, if if your connection fails, but you can email them and give them a solution, maybe like, this is my number for a video call, this is, that's quite a good idea. Um, yeah, it just shows that you can, you're not phased by it, and that you've thought, you've thought of a backup plan, which kind mm. of says something about you as well. Yeah, that's a good, um, a good point, that. Um, we hear horror stories, uh, obviously, about video interviewing. The one that, I don't know if it's an urban legend, because I've never actually found a person this happened to, but it was for um, a job, they were applying for a training solicitor job, and they were doing it, which is quite common to, to do video interviews for, and um, they'd worn their, like, suits, and they were sat in front of the camera, and they looked great, and then the, um, in, the person doing the interview said, okay, now go and stand against the back wall and present this to us. And they were wearing pyjama bottoms. <laughs> oh, God, what a nightmare. I know. Um, and I spoke to Grand Cruises, and they said that person was cruel who made them do that, because everyone knows that that might happen. But what's your, um, do you have any horror stories, and what's your advice for stuff like safety? Well, I suppose, you know what I'm going to say, the advice is to be booted and booted just as if you were going for um, a live, you know, face-to-face -face interview, um, yeah. because I think it immediately makes you feel more professional. And if, if, you're, if you're sort of professionally presented, you are going to act professional. Um, That's a good point. For sure. Um, so it, it, I think it will automatically make you do that. And I mean, even on BBC News, there was that chap, I don't know if you, if, um, you remember or anyone else remembers, when he was being interviewed at home and then his two children wandered across oh, the yeah. screen and then <laughs> the wife came in and had to shoo them out and we all remember him actually I'm not sure I remember what he was talking no, about no idea <laughs> um but I remember the actual incident and uh, everyone was probably cringing and feeling very sort of sympathetic towards him yeah. um but you you're professional you're presenting yourself professionally so you if you, you mustn't put yourself in that position where you aren't you know, you could be caught out in some way. And I do remember, Rick, somebody um, I was doing a mock interview, Skype interview with, and they were sat in front of their wardrobe with the cupboard, the doors open, and all their underwear was um, on the shelf <laughs> nice and very neatly. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I did have to point that out because I hadn't thought that one through. And it is that extra thinking through, where am I? Is the dog or cat likely to come in yeah. and bark or, or sort of jump up onto the desk? Um, is anybody likely to come in or start um, shouting or making the dinner in a really loud way? You know, yeah. just think that one through, uh, which you may not always, because you're stressed about doing the interview and what to say. It's also the kind of surroundings. And if you are in a serene surroundings, you are going to be much more prepared and calm. Yeah. So put a sign on the door that says, do not, do not enter. Yeah, even do that. Yeah. You know, do not enter. I'm, you know, yes. And I'm sure members of your family or whoever you're with um, are going to be very understanding. 
I think it's a good point as well. Just check your background because, like you say, clothes they don't mind that there's a wardrobe in the background, but when it's open and it's got, you know, <laughs> it was very funny actually. Juice, yeah. <laughs> juice about. Yeah, <laughs> or blanks, you know, blank, or even if it's just a picture of it in the background, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just, just be mindful, uh, be mindful of it, and and what's around you, and and then also on the technical, just going back to the technical thing, to make sure that your whole face can be seen because. Yeah. I've been doing some zooming and um, Adobe stuff when I only see the top of people's heads, and that's yeah. that's a bit weird as well. And my a, a good one for me is don't put your laptop on your knee. It's never a good look. Like you know, prop your laptop up when you if it's got a built-in camera. Absolutely, and you you might be you know a little bit shaky and yeah. all the rest of it. So just it's all about minimizing and controlling all the things you can control, minimizing your stress yeah. because you've got enough to be thinking about answering the questions. Um, something that um, you'll be surprised because I hide it so well, but some people think I've got a bit of an accent. And um, for that reason, especially since I've moved to London, I find that more people now find it difficult to understand what I'm saying at times. When we have technology, that is also an extra level of where it could be a bit distorted. What would you say is important when making sure you're easily understood in, a, in, a, in an interview over video where it could be a, the um, audio issues could a bit, be a bit worse? Well, I think, again, the practice thing beforehand would be helpful. So if you practice or just record yourself on your phone and see how you come across. Yeah. Um, and I bet you you'll be talking a bit fast, which can be difficult if, if you've got a um, an accent and you're talking fast or you, you, you have a tendency to speak softly. So <laughs> I think for everybody, um, having that practice recording is, is a good idea. And if you find, oh, I, I am speaking a bit faster, Try and speak slowly. I know it's difficult when you're nervous, but you'll get used to it. And actually, as yeah. you relax into an interview, which we all inevitably do, I think, you know, the accent will be fine. You'll enunciate properly. But mm. if you do have a bit of a tendency to mumble, you'll probably know that already. Yeah. And, and you need to kind of compensate for that. But do the test recording. A barrister once told me, because you obviously have to stand up and talk quite a lot, that you should always feel a little bit uncomfortable with how slowly you're talking. But then I think sometimes that makes you talk far too slow, so you've got to find a happy happy level there. I know, it's a bit like when we think, oh, I'm pausing, and it's like minutes are going by when actually it's only yeah. seconds and it's not a problem at all. It might be the same about speaking a little bit slower, because actually remember the person on the other end has to hear you. I mean, I'm sometimes a little bit, I, I find it difficult to hear everything properly. Mm. So it would really, I would really appreciate someone speaking more slowly and I could really listen to what they're saying. So, yeah. you know, think about the interviewer as well as yourself. I think the idea of recording is a really good idea because I've listened back to some of these podcasts and I did not realise how Mancunian I was. And I like it, but they make me think I need to make sure I'm understandable. So that's a really good point. Well, and so you, I understand you perfectly, but your accent <laughs> is great. Um, you're, yeah. you're nice and clear t to me. I don't mind. I sound a bit like a Gallagher brother, but it'll be all right. Oh, no, not the Gallagher brother. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think the idea of um, like kind of living as though you are in a face-to-face -face interview, I think it's the same with um, phone call, um, um, phone interviews. If you, you know, if you take it and you're still, you're learning your best, you don't have that mentality of mm -hmm. um, being in a business mind. I think it's smart, like you say, to sit up, so, you know, go and put, look smart and you get yourself into the mind frame of the, someone who's a professional. A, a Absolutely. Really good point. Yeah. Um, so are there um, any tips or tricks? Because one thing that you do have a bit of an opportunity with with a video interview is that there is a whole wall behind the camera, at which I'm assuming students might think this is a good place to hide um, some cue uh, cards and so on. Yes. I mean, yes, because people can't see that. Um, so a few key post-it notes, but not loads of post-it notes, because then I've seen people kind of peering at things and not looking straight at the camera or straight at the yeah. screen. And you can see their eyes are going to the left or right or up looking at things. So you really need to give yourself some cue cards, but keep it short um, and not lots of detail because it will be obvious yeah. that you're doing that. So just be a bit careful. 
Sometimes it looks like an eye roll as well, which is not at all what you're doing, but that's no, a good it's point. not a good look. Yeah, no. you look to the side and it actually looks like you're um, you're a bit bored of the interview, so that's a really good point yeah, for me. Yeah, so just be, yeah, just try to have them as central as possible without obviously showing and not too much writing. So just, they're just kind of reminders. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and do you have any horror stories that you've heard um, of video interviews that people can learn from? Not that I've come across that I can remember. No. Um, only things I've seen on TV. And I mean, there are lots of jokey things on, on YouTube about how not to interview and everything. But yeah. you just don't want to get caught out. And if you prepare and you, and you listen to this podcast um, and you take on board all the points and you do that practice thing, then that should set you up. Yeah. And then there's, of course, the preparing the answers to potential questions. So you've oh, got yeah. all that preparation to do as well. But, you know, it's, we have to, we're living in this world at the moment where we need to adapt. You need to show that you're adaptable as an interviewee. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's brilliant. Have you, um, so have you got any final points that you, uh, that you think are great to make about video interviewing um, before we end the podcast? Well, just again to repeat, you know, practice, um, think about the interviewer and how they're going to view you. Mm -hmm. If you put yourself in their shoes, sometimes that can be a, a good thing to do and, and check everything and, yeah, the practice beforehand. And best of luck. Everybody's in the same boat. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, so I wish everybody the best of luck with doing this. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Joe is a fantastic careers advisor, so that is really golden advice. Some brilliant stuff there to take away, and I think one that is a piece of advice maybe even I wouldn't have thought of, which is I just thought was really, really clever, was record yourself and watch it back as though you're the interviewer. And it is hugely important because I can tell you right now, I don't think I have an accent until I hear myself being recorded. And at that point I realise, okay, slow down and speak a bit clearer. So it's really good to hear yourself or see yourself back. Also see other things that you maybe aren't familiar that you're doing. So it might be that you look like you eye roll, or it might be that you sigh and look really fed up. And it just means that then when you're actually doing your, doing your video interview, you can spot those errors. You can also take a look at the background and make sure that your location is suitable. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just we don't want it to be maybe posters of anything inappropriate or as Joe said, with a brilliant example, um, a wardrobe with some underwear on show. Um, but yeah, take some uh, take the advice and hopefully you'll be successful if you do have any video interviews coming up. But it's also great um, advice just to be aware of now that businesses and classes and so on are going online, even though it might just be for a short period. Well, thanks a lot. Like I say, always, if you go on our website, it's law.ac.uk. We've got tons of um, stuff you can and look at on there lots of resource to give you some tips on courses but also on just the professions out there and subscribe to this and then check out all our online events at which you'll be able to interact with us and talk to us about any more questions you might have and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day thanks a lot